What's the best, I told you so, moment. I was in freight. I delivered a pallet, that was supposed to have 750 pieces. It looked a little short, so, I asked the customer to count it. He refused three times, after I explained to him, if it was short, they're going to deny your claim. He said, don't worry. I said okay, and noted it on the paperwork, that he refused to count. He signed it. Two weeks later, he called the customer service rep, to report a shortage and make a claim. The customer service rep called me and asked did I remember it. I said, yep, read the notes. She said, oh, he refused to count it. Claim denied, thanks bye. LOL. Ex-boss, who I was not fond of, had a vehicle he wanted to sell. He met someone, who wanted to make payments on it, used private party, but take possession, when they made the first payment. I told him, not to do it. I said, it was almost certain they will crash the car, and then just stop paying, and he'll be left with a damaged car and no money. He told me I was dumb, and went ahead with the deal. Okay. Whatever you say. For a couple months things were good, and he was pretty smug. Then he comes in one day and tells me, to research what happens, if the above scenario happens, and the car was in a tow yard, collecting fees. He wanted to know, if he was responsible for the fees. I didn't even look up. Yup. If you want the car back you are. People really just don't understand how cars and car loans work. And it's always such an expensive lesson. A co-worker of mine, had her car totaled last year. She says, well, at least I don't have to pay my car payment tomorrow. I said, have they cut you a check? No. You need to pay your car payment tomorrow. No because it's totaled, the insurance company is going to pay for the whole car. Have they cut you a check? No, I just said that. You need to pay your car payment tomorrow. Guess who didn't get a check, for 3 months, and took a 100 plus point hit on her credit, while she was in the middle of trying to purchase a new car? Until that loan, is officially paid and closed, pay your bill. In the late 80s, I worked for my mother-in-law, as a regional manager of her business. I worked very long hours for $500 per week. At some point, I told her, that I deserved a raise. She asked me, how much I thought that I deserved, and I replied that she couldn't replace me, for less than $1,000 per week. She responded, that she was sure that she could, so, I said, fine, show me. She had trouble finding someone, and finally had to pay the $1,000. But after two weeks, he was totally incapable of doing what I did, so, she had to split it into two regions, and hire a second guy at $1,000 per week. After six months, she discovered that they teamed up to embezzle about, $15,000. Of course, she never acknowledged to anyone, especially not me, that I was right, and she effed up badly. Reminds me a bit of my former job. We were a private company here in Australia that had government contracts all over the country and internationally to produce driver's licenses. That included, front-end enrollment, photo capture etc. as well as printing the licenses. So, we had our computers, network, camera and signature hardware rolled out, in government offices. And we had our own service staff that looked after this. That was basically, what set us apart, from our competition, we could do the whole thing end-to-end, -end, whereas our competition, could only do printing and had to hire third parties to handle the front-end parts. One day, our management decided to do some cost-cutting, and retrench all our service engineers and instead outsource this job to a contractor firm. I went to the absolute barricades to argue against this. Not just because it was plainly obvious, that this would cost us money in the long term, but also, because it would lose us customers. Producing driver's licenses is secure work, so, all our service engineers, had to have regular police checks done. If the government can't trust us with the job, they'll go elsewhere. It was no good. For all my complaining, they went ahead with the plan. Within two years, we'd lost most of our contracts. I left some time ago, too. A couple of weeks ago, I went for dinner, to catch up, with two former work colleagues. Turns out, that one of the two remaining contracts they still have is just about to leave too. Partially because, the contractors they'd hired turned out to be disastrous, huge staff turnover very slow response times, staff who have no idea what they're doing, because they've received no training, but one of them, even ended up stealing hardware, that he then tried to sell. That hardware used to produce driver's licenses, so, obviously, that stuff is highly secure, and every last item needs to be accounted for. The CFO, who pushed for outsourcing this job left, or got let go, 
not long after, but the damage was done. I'll be hugely surprised, if this company with a 150 year history, still exists in 2 years time. Working at a tire shop, customer bring in, a Land Rover Range Rover, with air suspension, for a set of tires. I watch the tire changers, start to set their little scissor lift under the frame, to pick it up, and I go over and stop them. I tell them, that they should take it down to the second drive on rack, and use the swing jacks under the axles, or else they're going to blow out the suspension. The assistant manager overhears this, and comes out into the shop saying that, I just called Land Rover and they said, that to turn off the air ride, all you have to do is, open the rear hatch, and turn the hazard lights on. Just pick it up where it is, and get on with it, the customer's waiting. At that point I said, well, you heard the man, I'm going to go back down by my toolbox. Holler, if you need me. About a minute and a half later, what sounds like a shotgun blast, is heard throughout the shop. They lifted the truck by the frame, and blew out all four suspension airbags, just like I said, would happen. They eventually wound up, putting it on the drive on lift, and using the swing jacks, just like I told them to do. Then the customer got to drive all the way from Manassas, Virginia to Alexandria, Virginia on the bump stops, where the shop I was working for, paid $6,000 for a set of used suspension airbags, to be installed. God forbid, the guy who's actually worked on Land Rovers before, might know what he's talking about, even if I had only been at that particular shop, for three days. At least, they started listening to me, when I told them stuff. When I was in high school, 15 years ago, during a basketball game, the coach pulled me out, and berated me, for not boxing out the opponent, for a rebound. I did box her out and I knew it, so, I talked back to him. We really got into it. That really ticked him off, so, I didn't go back in the rest of the game. The next Monday at school, he pulled me into his office, and said, he watched the game film over the weekend, and apologized, because, I did indeed, box her out. Booked a flight to Bangkok, with a cancelling insurance, and almost all of my friends laughed, why'd I spend extra money, on such thing? They weren't laughing, in March 2020. Wouldn't you get your money back, anyways? Because the airline would be cancelling the flight? Laughs, in corporate greed, oh, you. The amount of ways, airlines are allowed to legally screw you over, are astounding, lol. When I was waitressing in college, I got seated a man and a woman together for lunch. When I asked, what they wanted to drink, the woman put down the drink menu, sighed and said, just a water. The man ignored me and said something like, and another thing, complaining about something loudly. He was switching from English into Spanish and back, and I just zoned out, for about 30 seconds, until I asked, if I should give them a minute to decide. Dude turns to me, like he's just seeing me. I was 21 with a tanning bed tan, and color in blonde hair. I also worked a double the day before, he smirks, and says to the woman, this is what I'm talking about. Look at her. I bet she doesn't know one question off the test, and she was born here. Why should I learn it? The woman apologizes, and explains, they just come from taking the US naturalization test, and they would both have waters. I grab their waters, and they are still arguing when I come back. I set the drinks down, and turn to walk away, when the man says, hold on to his friend, he says, no, I want to prove a point. He then turns to me and asks, do you think you could pass the test to be a naturalized as citizen? I said, probably, but I know that I'd love to take their order for them. Guy wasn't happy. Anyway, I get it, tests are annoying. But he's wired into it by now, and finally stands up upset, and says, fine, say the preamble to the constitution. Fellow Americans who had an insane social studies teacher in 8th grade, who made you memorize the preamble to pass their class, stressed about it, and thought, they'd never make it to high school, this one is for you. I hadn't thought of the preamble since then probably, but baby, my public school middle school 8th grade teacher was right, y'all I would need to know this important information later in life. It was my time to shine. I preamble the absolute shit out of that preamble. The preamble was preambling. Didn't even have to schoolhouse rock sing it, it was like the those 52 words were now a part of my DNA. I also stood up straight, and stared off at attention to nothing, which I'm sure added to this pinnacle of my college career. The woman clapped, when I was done. The man sat down hard, and turned away from me. I then looked back at them and said, now, can I please take your order? It was perfect. A bald eagle landed on my shoulder. 
Uncle Sam cried. Okay, no, but the woman said, screw it, and ordered beer and pizza, while he sat angry and silent. I got $20 tip, and the privilege of sharing this important information learned in school. Also on par with, but not quite as important, as mitochondria being the powerhouse of the cell. It was a good day. As a teacher, telling the head principal at my school, that the way they were abusing the alternate assessment program, to boost standardized test scores, was not just a huge burden on teachers, but also illegal, and likely to attract the scrutiny of the State Department of Education. He handed me a shitty assignment for the next year, I quit, and he ended up, having to take that assignment, teaching 16 kids with emotional disorders, across three grade levels, in one classroom, for the first month and a half of the school year, because they couldn't find anybody to take my place. I heard later that year, that they came down hard on him, for the scheme he'd concocted, and ended up shutting down, the alternative assessment program altogether. Told you so, DL. If that's the major one, I'm thinking about that was in the news, a few years back. One of the majors involved, showed up in a Reddit thread, complaining about, how it derailed his career and life, and it was unfair, because although he beat federal charges, he had to plead to others as a compromise, and he didn't break any laws. So, I did some digging, figured out who he was, read the court filings, and he was clearly lying, had clearly broken the law and knew it, and had participated in hiding them. He 100% deserved it. When I was 13 years old, I found out, my brother was selling drugs out of my parents' house, he used to tell them, he was giving away McDonald's coupons, that he got from working the drive through We lived in a very nice neighborhood, and I knew the influx of cars, would attract police attention, after asking him to stop several times, I finally caved, and told my parents. I was literally in tears, because I felt guilty snitching on him, but felt like I had no other choice, because he was going to ruin his life. When I told my parents, they accused me of being jealous of him, for having better grades in school, and called me a liar. He was able to continue on, for two years, before finally getting caught. Our home was raided, and he was on the 5 o'clock news that evening, my mother watched and sobbed, and I couldn't help, but say, I told you so, what could have been an easy conversation, ended in federal charges, and several hundred thousand dollars, in lawyer fees. Family friend's truck, was making a grinding noise from the brakes. Told him, to drive something else to go hunting. Got a call the next day, because he drove it two hours, and then his brakes stopped working. He ended up needing calipers, on top of the pads, and rotors, he would've originally needed. Who the F thinks to themselves, oh, there a chance my brakes will stop working, I'll just keep driving. That's so dumb. Funny thing is, that I warned him he would need calipers, if he drove it. Fords have an issue, where if it's metal on metal, the pistons tend to fracture, into pieces. My dad had a rule, that if he worked on the car, we had to be with him, use the manual, and help. He gave me the manual. The manual said, it was the relay. I told him that. He said, I read it wrong, and didn't follow, the if this, then this, correctly. We replaced the battery, it didn't start. We replaced the starter. It didn't work. We replaced alternator, it didn't work. We went to the repair shop, they replaced the relay, it worked. I loved my dad. I knew a bit more about cars, and other household stuff, than most girls. But mom and I, still have a laugh over that story, and the clutch, which is a whole other story. My roommate at the time, always refused to take his keys, whenever he left the house, despite me telling him, not to do that, relying on the fact, that I always had mine. Our shifts ended around the same time, so we would usually come home together. One day, whilst we were both out, I had to go back to my parents' house, which was a couple hours away. As I was pulling up to their drive, I get a call from him, stranded in the rain, outside our place, without his keys. I told him, that I wouldn't be returning until tomorrow, and that there was nothing I could do. He ended up staying over, at one of our friend's houses, but since then, he's never left the house, without his keys. I had a similar roommate, but it involves me being petty. In my first year of college, I lived with three other housemates, one of which was a horrible one, in all aspects. He lost his keys in the first week, so, we told him, to get a new one. Of course he did not, partially relying on the fact, that I'm usually home and awake. For two weeks, I opened the door for him and reminded him, to get a new key. He said, he had been busy that week, and he will do it as soon as possible. I found it plausible 
knowing how busy it can actually get in college, sometimes. In the third week, it started to get annoying. I started pretending like, I was not home, or was sleeping, when I did not feel like walking downstairs, to open the door. I was genuinely curious, when he would finally give up on this, and just go get new keys. The housekeeper was just down the hall, which would take him two minutes, at most. Later in the month, after social circles have been established, I started to notice, he was coming home after 2 am. He was able to open the door, so, I figured, he finally got the keys. I was happy. Until I realized, he just started not locking the door, when he went out, instead of getting himself some keys. There was a theft incident, not too far from our house, so, I told him, I'm locking the door when I go to bed. I woke up, to someone knocking on the door, at 4 am occasionally, but did not bother to leave the bed. And finally, one day, our college announces, that we will switch to a remote learning environment for the time being, as COVID just became a big thing, and that there would be no classes next week, until they figure out, how to handle this. At the same time, I learned that planes are about to be cancelled, so, I took the first one home. It's an international college, and I was coming from another country. So did all my housemates. One day, he sends a very angry message, to the group chat that he is unable to get his stuff for his flight, and we should open the door for him. I replied, that I left the country already, to which my other two roommates, replied, that they did, too. So, this roommate was unable to enter the house. He missed his flight, because the housekeeper was not around. When he found the housekeeper the next day, he said, he needs one of our keys to copy. So, the guy had to pay a fortune, to get the locks changed completely. I haven't really seen him, since. I was a contractor, managing stormwater ponds. Happy to field questions on the topic. Cattails are usually bad, because they grow so aggressively, they'll clog inflow outflow pipes, and take up the flood storage volume. Also, often are, a monoculture, with little ecological value. I had a manager I supervised, who kept saying, we don't have to sub that out, to some company. I can rent an excavator and get all the cattails out, roots and all. He was a sketchy mechanic sort of character. Always had a MacGyver solution, always was double dipping with work equipment. I finally approved his scheme to rent a Mini X. Guess who, gets a Tim, I effed up, FaceTime, 15 minutes later? Me. I drive across the state, to get on site, and see he's submerged the excavator in the pond, and ran it so water sucked up the intake. We had to daisy chain two F-350s, to the tow truck, to tow the F thing, 6 feet. He ended up buying it, from the rental place, and repairing it, and flipping it. When my younger brother fell through the ice, while crossing a creek, when we were kids, around 11 and 9. It was only slightly higher than knee deep on us, and slow moving, so, not a high risk of drowning. However, a very uncomfortable half mile walk, back to the house, in 45 degrees Fahrenheit weather. I told him, the ice was too thin to cross there, and we could cross, maybe 300 feet up steam, where it was ankle deep water, that was still frozen pretty solid, but, I wasn't the boss of him, 4 steps later, and he's up to his armpits, because he landed on his butt, on the creek bed. What made it better was, the entire whining walk home, he thought, he would be in big trouble with my mom. However, one look, at the waddling, pitiful mess, and mom broke out in laughter, as she helped him out of the clothes. It gets funnier. He was mad that she wasn't mad, and was shouting, about how it's not funny, and why isn't he in trouble? Isn't he grounded or something? Which leads to mom, running out of breath, because she's laughing so hard now. He ends up storming to his room, without being sent there. Told X, I was passing a kidney stone, and needed to go to the ER or urgent care. She told me to suck it up, and that it was just a bit of man flu. Despite the pain, my anger had me, drive her and myself, to the urgent care, get a CT scan, and have to doctor tell me, that it was a 5 mm kidney stone, halfway to my bladder. The look on her face, when he confirmed that I was right, was worth the pain and agony. My old boss, has a 20 year old son. He told her one day, his stomach was hurting, and he thought something was wrong. She dismissed him and told him, he just didn't want to go to work, and he probably had gas. He comes home, after his shift, and tells her again that his stomach still hurts. He told her, he needed to go to urgent care. She grumbles and takes him. She complains about wasting her time, and that he just has a stomach ache. The doctor calls her into the exam room and tells her, 
they are expecting them at the hospital. Turns out, her son has appendicitis. The son tells the doctor, his mom didn't think there was anything wrong. Looks at her, and, told you so, mom. She apologized, and felt like, the worst mother in the world. I started following, when COVID started up, in China. It was various stories coming out in bits and pieces, but if you were paying attention, then you knew something bad was up. This was early to mid-January. I started telling friends and family about it, and saying, they needed to start paying attention. They mostly thought, I was being dramatic. Then when Italy shut down, they all started to notice. Yup. First time I saw an article, China shuts down X city, due to new unknown influenza. My first thought was, oh my god, China never shuts down for anything, this must be really really effing bad. Me too. I was running around the entire school pushing into classrooms giving lessons, on how to log into the online classroom. People thought I was crazy. I was making students check out books, from the library, and take them home. Who's laughing now? It's not me. When I lived in New Orleans, I knew, this insufferably pretentious goth chick, from Ohio or someplace, who was absolutely incapable of admitting, she was an omniscient. She was fixing herself lunch, and started blanketing it with cayenne pepper, and I warned her to watch out, since it really is spicy. She rolled her eyes at me, added a bunch more, took one bite, ran into the bathroom to barf, and didn't talk to anyone, for like two days. I had the same experience, but it was with black pepper, and my five-year-old. He added a ton of it to his sandwich, and I told him, it wasn't going to taste good. He didn't listen, and kept adding it. The look on his face, after the first bite, was worth the wasted food. I told him, I would make him eat every bite, if he kept going, but I felt like, one bite was enough, to learn the lesson. I warned my partner, that I neither liked, nor trusted, a friend and colleague, of his, and gave a detailed list of things, that said friend, had said or did, that rang my alarm bells, regarding his arrogance and trustworthiness. My partner brushed it off, saying, I'm too sensitive, and slightly biased. First chance this guy got, he inflated his abilities and experience, in a way, that caused an internal company crisis, and could get him fired. My partner had a quiet word with him, to try to warn him he was making a huge mistake, and, in return, got belittled and gaslight, in lengthy blame-shifting message, that ended with a jaunty, let's agree to disagree. When are we going for beers? The best part for me was, I didn't even have to say, I told you so, because my partner was stomping around, going, what an absolute cunt. You were right, you were right all along, and I should have listened to you. When I was 14, I fell down a flight of stairs, and messed up my knee, badly enough, that I had to have surgery on it. It was a day surgery, and when I came out of anesthesia, I found myself groggy, and sick to my stomach. The attending nurse needed to get me up and ready to leave, but I really didn't feel well. So, she's insisting that I sit up, and I'm protesting saying, that if I move, I will vomit. She made me sit up, telling me, you won't vomit. I promptly puked, all over her. That's one dumb nurse. Nausea from anesthesia is really, really common. It's why, we're not allowed to eat before surgery, for F's sake. Yes, that's due to concern over vomiting during the surgery, but the reason is the anesthesia, which was still in your system, hence the whole, coming out of it, thing. Dad was setting up one of those CRT rear projection TVs, in the living room. I knew that the cable wasn't coming through, since he had the wrong channel on, so, I went up to tell him, and he started to yell at me, to get out of the living room. I came back, an hour later, to see him still struggling with it. I walked up, changed the channel, and walked away. He was really mad, that I got it to work. This one happened recently. My dog has been chewing through his leash, and it was on the literal edge of breaking. I told my mom, not to use that leash, even though it's retractable, because it's gonna break. I've been using the short thick leash, not retractable, because it's harder for the dog to chew through. My mom used the leash, and guess what happened? It snapped. My mom had to close the gate, once he got to the backyard, they were at the front, and I had to go outside, in my fluffy pajamas, to catch the dog. It rained outside recently, so, the place was wet. Luckily, he didn't run out into the street, and it was at night. One time, when my kids were little, I took them apple picking, and then stopped at the supermarket with them, to pick up a few things. My daughter was still working on an apple, when we got in line to pay. A woman behind me said, 
I hope she's enjoying that apple, because all of us other customers, are paying for it. I said, excuse me? And she said, when you steal, the rest of us are paying for it. I told her, that we just come from apple picking, and she made a face, indicating, that I was full of it. I paid, went out to my car, and got the kids buckled in. As I was loading the groceries in the trunk, this same woman came out. She was parked right next to us. I pulled the bag of apples, out of the trunk, to show her, and said, here you go. I want you to appreciate, what an ass you just made of yourself. This is a bit of a silly one, but my brother, was in a long distance relationship with a girl from America, and the first time he flew out to see her, I jokingly told him, that if he didn't impress the Americans, then they would throw him in a thunderdome. He just laughed and told me, that there was no such thing as a thunderdome. Anyway, he flies out, and her town just happens to have an event called, the thunderdome. I rubbed that, in his face, for weeks, after he came back. I was working in a factory, that had very large pieces of machinery with large gearboxes, about the size of one of those smart cars. I noticed during my shift, that while idling, one of the machines, had a small spike in current draw. Every revolution of the motor, idle was about 15 revolutions per minute, so, you could see it on the monitors. I put a screwdriver up against the gearbox casing, and listened to it, it's a half ass stethoscope, and could hear, something sticking, and then popping free, as it turned. I told the supervisor, that a bearing, was right on the point of failure, and we needed to shut it down immediately for maintenance. He ignored my warning, and proceeded to queue up a job for the night shift, running at 80% max load, for 9 plus hours. I shrugged, and went home. At about 2 am, the gearbox failed catastrophically, causing, what the crew reported as, a small earthquake, as the entire building shook. I turned up for my next shift, and once they explained what happened, I just looked at the supervisor, and said, told you so. The machine was down for nearly a year, and a new gearbox had to be custom fabricated, and imported from Italy, because they didn't want, a couple of days downtime, for preventative maintenance. I don't know about my best, but here is one, most of us can relate to, right now. I predicted that the company I work for, would start laying off people, because they are too brazen, and borrow a ton of money to grow the company. The company is totally effed, LMAO, they have a stupid unreasonable target, unhappy talented employees, and they are going to get burned so bad, unless they sell the company to another fish. Not even kidding, if like two people quit, the whole company will have a domino effect of burnout and collapse, I wouldn't be shocked, if it only took one. F investment firms. They take good businesses and F them over, to make a profit, at the expense of everyone else involved. No morality, no empathy. This is why employees, need to stick together. We, make the company, not them. They will lay off their best employees to save money, only to find out the hard way, that they made them the effing money to begin with. Discuss your salary. Set boundaries together. Loyalty goes both ways. If they are kicking out people, and not rewarding their most loyal, then they don't deserve loyalty from you. Period. It really sucks, when you like working for a company, and slowly see it, become everything, it said it wouldn't be, when you joined, 